Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children, but we say they are for everyone. We are having one of the best missionary stories that we have ever told because most people today, even children, understand that there are evil people in the world. This is about Todd Beamer. When the terrorist hit the United States to try to murder people, he was on the fourth plane that went down. We are learning about his life as a little boy and about how he sought God's will in everything he did. And he knew that Lisa was the one that he wanted to court during his times in college. So he knew that he would wait regardless of how long this would take. It was over a year and a half he waited. So she knew also that this was the one. She knew that he had a sense of humor. He was not stuck on himself. Regardless of what he did, he knew that God's word said, without me, you can do nothing. So as they sought God's will, it teaches us in God's word in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise men glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness to the earth. For in those things I delight, saith the Lord. Let's pray. O oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, thy word says, whatsoever we do, do all to the glory of God. So we're asking that thou will teach us thy perfect will today. That each of us that are true children of God to walk worthy of thee unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of thee. Strengthen with all might by thy glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto thee. That we each will have the mind of Christ in every situation and that we will Realize our exalted position in thee, that we will have a bro broken heart and contrite spirit. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So as we saw these precious people that had to leave their families, you see, we only saw what happened with the terrorists. We only saw the terrible act of evil. But the many families, not just Todd, but the many families that had this same thing happen to them. But the one thing that happened with Todd, and that would happen if this happened to me, I would know I would be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's the greatest gift that you can give your family. This is what happened with Lisa and Todd. So after they had dinner together this one night, they just wanted to talk all the time. They talked on the phone and they could not quit thinking about each other. They just knew this was what God wanted for them. So as they talked about their life, Lisa's mother, and father both worked. And she also, her mother was a counselor at school. So she, as she also taught, thought of what God's will for her was as Todd. So they talked about how they were truly children of God. They knew without a shadow of a doubt that God had saved them and cleansed them from all sin. 
and that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from all sin. And we're washed from our sins in his own blood. They had no doubt that God's word was true, and they believed that and accepted him as Savior. That's what you must do. You must believe that it's all what Christ has done, and I accept that for my life. And then my life belongs to him. So this is what him and Lisa did. He said, now we both go to church and Sunday school. We go to our youth groups. Now I think it's time for us to be consecrated to the Lord. Now this is when they were dating. So they both did. They wanted Christ to be first in their life, regardless of what happened. So they were talking about, he said, did you play sports? Oh, yes, I played sports. I even, my brother collects cards, and I even flipped cards with the boys so I could collect for my brother's collection all of the trading cards. So she was so excited over this. And then she said, my mother was my coach. And he told her how he played and what happened to him with his jaw. And then there's something that they had not talked about. This was one of the things they needed to talk about was what had happened to her father. She knew her father at 15 years old was a man that loved the Lord. He loved all of her friends that came to her house. He loved her and taught her the word of God, even those things that were hard to understand. He sat down with her and explained them to her. And he was always there for dinner. He always kissed his mom, her mom, and hugged her when he came home. So one day he got sick and they sent him to the hospital. The doctors in the hospital, they miss what was wrong with him. They did diagnose it wrong. That means they did not know what, what was wrong. So they said they couldn't do anything. It was too late and he died. But she knew that he didn't just die. She knew where her father was, but she was devastated. She said, I don't know how I can go on without my dad. I, I just don't know how I can go on without my dad. She was 15 years old. Now, every one of you are going to face death in your family. But she knew where her father was. That is the difference with people that do not know Christ as Savior. Then you have no joy about that person. So her mother said, Lisa, for a believer, there's more than this life. There is heaven waiting for us. So I'm going to give you at the, at the end today what she knew about her father and where he was. She knew this, but that did not take the bitterness that she had. Her Sunday school teacher taught her how to drive. He tried to take the place of her father as much as he could. And she thought she would just r ruin the gears in his stick shift, but he taught her how to drive with a stick shift and he had so much patience with her. Her youth group, her youth leader said, Lisa, God has to be God. You have to know that all things work together for good to them that love God. She still could not get over her dad. So she told Todd how hard it was for her. So she knew that her Sunday school teacher and his wife loved her very much and they were a lot of help to her, but it did not take the place of her father. So they took her to Wheaton College and she knew this was a place where she was going to go to college. So after, while she was there, she met this wonderful, wonderful man that was a professor that signed her up to go to Indonesia. 
And when they talked about this, and she told him what had happened, she said, that is 10,000 miles from her here. But she signed up to go. And then you see believers sometimes won't you, they can hurt you worse than somebody that's unsaved. So this young man said to her, this young boy, oh, you can't go there. There's bugs and diseases and snakes. But she knew enough about the Lord, although she knew she wasn't happy about losing her dad, she knew enough about the Lord that if he was sending her, he would take care of her. So she went. While she was there, she was caring for four missionaries' children because they had a medical clinic. So they also, she even weeded the garden, their garden, and didn't see any snakes. So she even, while she was there, caught these children. And she told them of the love of God, of Jesus Christ. But she had an interpreter because they could not, she could not speak their language. So she came back home overjoyed to see people that had never heard about the Lord Jesus Christ. How could this happen? So when she came back, she still had this bitterness. So her teacher told her, he said, Lisa, he said, God could have sent your dad to another doctor. He could have sent him to a different hospital. He could have kept your father from dying, but he didn't. And you cannot reverse that. You must believe what God has done, that he's right in all his ways. So he had told her to read Romans 11. And as she started reading that, she, her heart began to soften. And she began to feel that God was taking this bitterness from her. So Romans 11, he t as she read this, Romans 11, verse 33. And you see, it takes the word of God to take bitterness from your life or to take any sin from your life. People telling you not to do it never works. Everybody that had tried to help her, she had to have the word of God. So he said, the Bible says, all oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. That is verse 33, Romans 11. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselors? Verse 35. Oh, who or who hath first given to him? And it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Then she turned to Ephesians 1. She read Ephesians 1 verse 19. And this says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power? There is nothing that he cannot do. And then verse 9 Ephesians 1, verse 9. Have it made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Everything he does is for our good. And he looked at her and he said, Lisa, you know that you are angry with God because you don't want to have any trials. You want to have everything a happy time that you think that you deserve. You want your happy life because you think that's what you deserve. Just like that, these words that she had read and knowing how great God is, he is right in all his ways and holy in all his works. Just like that, the bitterness was taken from her. And she had such joy. You see, if you get in this book, you will see how great God is. Let me just read while I'm here in Ephesians. 
Let me just read what he says that you can do today. You can ask him for this. In Ephesians 1, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of thee, the eyes of her understanding being enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints of God, that we may know the fullness of God, the fullness of Christ, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You see, Christ calls service what we are to him. He knows our heart. This changed her completely. And if you have bitterness toward another person, I want you today to get into this book and read what he says. Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiven one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So her and Todd at Thanksgiving in 1993, they were up on the Hud up uh, watching the Hudson River. And he looked at her and he said, would it be so bad for you to me to be your husband? She said, is that a proposal? He said, yes. Will you marry me? She said, yes. In 1994, they were married. She and him had consecrated their life to the Lord. And they went in their church after they were married. She was involved with a ladies Bible class. He was involved with the youth. All of these youth children loved him. You see, many children out here today have so many trials. Nobody loves them and will take time for them. She saw Todd with those children and how they admired him and loved him because they knew he loved them. And she said, he will make a wonderful father. So God gave them a son, David, the one that we saw that was three and a half years old at Christmas, when his father wasn't there. He loved David. God gave them another son, Drew. He taught those boys the love of God that was manifested through him as his father had been, as Lisa's father had been. But there's one thing, he had a weakness. He put too much time into his work. And Lisa said, her father, she never heard her father raise his voice. She said, Todd, I think you should rethink your workload. That's all she had to say. He went to the men in his church to ask them to pray. And he prayed that he would not spend more time at work that he could spend that time with these boys. He also would play sports with them, watch TV, the things that they liked on TV. He was right there with them in everything that they did. He quit working so much. Although he was a top salesman, he said, I only have one chance at being a good father and a good husband. I don't want to miss that. So in 2000, they went to her mom's and was spending New Year's Eve there. While they were spending New Year's Eve there, they decided to make, put a capsule and they would open it, a time capsule in 2010. So they were enjoying New Year's Eve. He wrote in his that he would like to be president of his own company and have three children. And she wrote that they would be able to stay in New Jersey and they would have three children. Well, when she put her, hers in there, she thought, what if one of us is not here in 2010? So how could Lisa love those? because God had taught her to love her enemies. Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. She knew God's commandment to us. 
that this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Both of them knew, show me thy ways, O Lord. This teach me thy paths. So now she knows what death is. Todd has not had this in his family. So here's what happens when someone, we see here we have the love of Christ. We have that the, God is eternal. Even from everlasting, thou art God. For with thee is a fountain of life. So God is eternal. He has no beginning or no ending. So when someone is taken from your life, they have eternal life, so they're living in heaven as a believer. So this is how we as believers must understand what it is to be a child of God, because that's eternal life. I am absent from the body and present with the Lord. Although Lisa knew this, she had that deep hurt that her earthly father was not here. But she had the truth of being with him forever in heaven. So you can do the same thing today. Each of you that are listening. Now, if you don't know what the rapture means, this is what the rapture means. Enoch lived to be 365 years old. Enoch pleased God for 300 years. So, how many years have you pleased God? Now, let me show you today that I want you to understand that the next event for believers is for us to be raptured to be with the Lord. First of all, this is what he has promised us. Now, those of you that have never truly believed this, and you have doubt that God is going to come again in the clouds to take us to be with him. Here's what he said before he went back to heaven. He said, you shall be witnesses unto me. So the angel stood there in white apparel and said to the 11 disciples, ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Now, the Bible doesn't say rapture, but being called up to beat him in the air, how else could we meet him in the air if he didn't say that he's coming back again to take us to be where he is? He said in John 14, now you need to know these, 2 and 3, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, now look at this, God's word can't lie. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Where is he? In heaven. Read these verses. Memorize them. You need to know that what God's word says is true. So when Moses and Elijah, when Christ was in the Mount of Transfiguration, we know Enoch went to heaven without dying. We know that Elijah went to heaven in a pillar of a fiery chariot. That was, that is, the chariots are 10,000 times 10,000s of angels. He was taken up into heaven. When Enoch was taken up, he went out before the flood came. Moses had died. Both of them Elijah and Moses, Elijah had been taken up without dying. Enoch was taken up before the flood, which we're going to be taken up before the rapture, before the revelation comes. And then Moses was, had died, and Elijah had been taken to heaven without dying. So here's what God is going to do. Now you memorize these verses. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You see, it's only those that are in Christ. Now, Christ is the only way that you can get to heaven. 
Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, I have not got time today, but I will do this next week because we're going to finish this. Here's what he's going to do. He's going to, we're going to hear the trumpet sound. The dead in Christ have gone back to the dust. Those are going to be raised first. This could happen at any moment because the next event is the rapture for the believers. So we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Now next week I'm going to give you the rest of these lessons that you need to know. Who will be raptured? All born again believers. When will the rapture take place? No one knows. I'll give you these scriptures next week. How shall we prepare for the rapture? Well, God's Word says, in His Word, and if you don't know His Word, you need to study this. In John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on you. As a child of God, how are we to be living in these days? In 1 John, it tells us how we're to be living. And if you don't know these lessons, he says in 1 John 3, Beloved, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration, his body was a body of light. That's what we're going to receive. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. He has a body of light. That's what we're going to have. And when we see this and know these truths, we will never fear death. Because yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. This is what the world needs today, Christ. <laughs>